welcome to Biostock Studio at Medical Village in Lund. Today we are joined by Jeppe Ovesen from Synact Pharma that is here today to give us a company update and some uh, information about their ongoing rights issue. So uh, welcome Jeppe. Thank you very much Olivia, thank you very much for having us and uh, thank you very much for all of you joining. Uh, today uh, we will have some forward-looking statements and uh, therefore a short disclaimer on uh, the presentation. The presentation itself will have the following outline. Uh, just a very brief overview of the company. Uh, then I will discuss a little bit more about the pipeline and the pipeline development that we see going forward. Uh, then uh, I will cover the business development, a short status on where we are with uh, potential partners. And then we will discuss uh, the rights issue a bit more in detail in order for all shareholders to be able to see uh, what this uh, rights issue is all about. Then uh, we will discuss a bit on the strategy going forward in Synact and then end up uh, the presentation with a short uh, question and answers. Synact Pharma, just as a very quick uh, overview, uh, we are focused uh, in the development of novel and uh, first in class treatment targeting inflammatory diseases. It is a target that we have been working with for quite some time. Uh, we actually started the first company out in 2000, uh, Action Pharma, where we managed to sell the lead project to Appvi. And then we created another company, TXP Pharma, located in Switzerland. And then uh, back in 2012, uh, Synac Pharma, all around the same target and around the same technology. We are working with autoimmune uh, diseases, inflammatory diseases, all with a big medical need and big market potentials. I will come back to a bit more about the uh, milestones that we have achieved uh, during 2021. The two major ones was that we have received data, positive data in phase two studies in two different indications. A major achievement for a relatively small company. On the right side of this slide, you can see a few facts and figures. The company was founded in 2012. We managed to list the company at Spotlight in 2016. And uh, we are in the planning uh, and also in the process uh, of uh, doing an uplist to uh, NASDAQ main market. We have more than uh, 14,000 uh, shareholders and we're very proud of that. They have been very supportive and many of them have been uh, with us basically for since uh, the IPO uh, back in uh, 2016. In the management, we are also uh, very motivated. Uh, we are in the position where we hold amongst uh, us uh, around 20% ownership. This slide uh, just shows you a few of the milestones that we achieved in uh, 2021. Uh, the first one was that uh, we received positive data in a COVID-19 uh, study. Uh, and that was a study that we conducted in, in Brazil uh, with positive data coming out in, in Q2. In Q4, uh, we received uh, milestone data, uh, positive data again on our RA study, our main focus and our main project. Uh, very exciting data, uh, better than uh, expected. Uh, coming out from uh, a relatively small study. Then we have been, uh, during the year, filing uh, additional uh, patents. And that is something that has been very important for us because we have managed to extend the patent life uh, from uh, where we were up until 2042. And that is a very important point also seen in relation to uh, our activities in, in business development. We have also con conducted uh, additional toxicology studies so that we now are uh, able and allowed to uh, dose in 12-week uh, in studies. And that has also a big impact on our business development discussions and our ability to uh, drive the programs uh, further. And then uh, we have also worked uh, a lot on a tablet formulation. It is so that the first two clinical studies have been uh, conducted uh, based on a formulation, uh, but now we have also shown that we can take the same formulation, produce a tablet, uh, and that is what we are going to do uh, in the studies going forward. It means a lot. Uh, it gives us a bigger flexibility in designing the studies going forward. And it is also something that the takers uh, like to see that uh, we have managed to go from a suspension to a tablet production. 
Royal Majority Arthritis is uh, the, the, the key driver in our company and our main asset. And as you can see on this slide, it is a very uh, severe, uh, severe uh, indication and a huge uh, market potential. We're in a situation where 1% of the global population is affected uh, by this indication. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the market size of, of 30 billion US dollars is a substantial market and also why we have been able to get in front of all the takers uh, in terms of uh, doing a deal uh, at, a, at a certain point in, in, in the process. In order to position uh, our compound and have the competitive advantage very clear uh, going forward, we are in a situation where the clinical profile of our compound, AP1189, is based on once daily oral dosing. And that is very important because it is giving, giving the, the, the project uh, and the compound a competitive edge here. We have a quick onset of action uh, as early as days. Uh, that is also compared to other drugs uh, on the market, uh, really uh, an edge that is important to us. And then uh, I'll come back to later, uh, explaining a bit about our competition. Uh, but definitely, as you have seen in the market, uh, our competition, especially the JAG inhibitors, have had major problems uh, with safety. And therefore, uh, we are on that one. Uh, in a very comfortable situation as well. Basically what we are going to do, and that's the main reason for conducting uh, the rights issue that uh, we have launched uh, just recently, that is we are going to conduct two phase two studies. Uh, the first one we call EXPAND, and that is a study in previous treatment naive RA patients. That study is to go, be to con to conducted in Europe at uh, many of the same sites as we conducted the first study. And that is going to be a 12-week study. And I'll come back to that a bit later uh, when we talk about business development. Then the second study is an ad adaptive uh, phase two trial design in DMR IR patients. And that is going to be conducted under an IND, which means that we can also uh, conduct part of that study uh, in the US. I would like to talk a bit about business development and that is uh, what has also uh, had a lot of interest from our shareholders. Um, but thanks to very strong data received uh, back late uh, 21, we have and we are still in positive discussions uh, with potential partners. It is big pharma companies, but it's also more specialized biotech companies. We have since data point four months ago, spent more, most of our management time on these discussions and will continue these interactions over the coming months. We have been reaffirmed in these discussions that the program and the studies have been well designed and are triggering the trends seen in the market, thereby meeting patient needs and filling the market gap. At the same time, our competition, the so-called JAG inhibitors, have faced increasing problems with side effects, including black box warnings from FDA. This has, of course, inter uh, increased the interest for our program even further, and we have been reaffirmed that our safety profile with AP1189 is one of the key drivers in reaching a deal. All up, we are as good as the competing products, but with a better safety profile. We have also learned a few things during the last three months. One take home has been that some of the partners would like to see a longer study, not necessarily bigger studies, but instead of a four weeks treatment, a 12 weeks treatment. And that is exactly what we are going to prepare for in one of the main, and one of the main reasons uh, for doing uh, the rights issue as proposed. Another important reason uh, for the rights issue is that we wish to maintain a strong position for, going, for doing a deal coming from a position of strength and show that Synact is a company that controls its own destiny, destiny, that is important for us and that is generally important for, for all biotech companies. Therefore, we will not sit on our hands, wait for a deal. We want to move forward, make progress, optimize the value of the program and show that we stay in control and are able to push a dual strategy going forward. 
This slide, just to give a very brief overview of the uh, rights issue, uh, what we are going to do is that we have secured uh, 150 million uh, Swedish crowns, and uh, that is uh, made so that uh, it is 100% uh, guaranteed rights issue. For you as a shareholder, it means that uh, for every 11 shares you have, you will be given uh, or given the opportunity to buy uh, one share at a, a rate of 63 uh, Swedish crowns. And below, you can see the timeline uh, which extended uh, just over Easter. So we hope that uh, you as shareholders will uh, support us in this uh, strategy. Uh, I know that many of you have been uh, with us for a very long time, uh, and I hope that uh, you will stay on and uh, give us uh, the power to uh, conduct this, uh, this dual strategy. The use of proceeds, uh, schematic overview here, uh, quite simple. Uh, we would like to use around 60% of the income to uh, conduct the clinical studies. Uh, around 20% will go into our R&D. Uh, as you know, we have also some uh, preclinical activities ongoing to support uh, the existing pipeline and also be a quite an important element into the the business development setting. And then uh, around 20% or a bit below actually will go into general ad and administration. 2022, but also 23, uh, will be uh, really important uh, years for, for SUNACT. And I think we have a, a good, uh, good overview of the expected milestones that we see uh, coming in uh, in the different quarters uh, going forward. Uh, Q2 will be uh, a lot of activities in getting the, the studies going. Uh, prepare for all that. It's work that has been ongoing since we got the data. Uh, then uh, we expect that uh, we'll have the IND uh, in place in, in Q3 and where we can initiate uh, the first uh, expand study, the first uh, phase two uh, program will, will, will be initiated in, in Q3. And then in Q4, we will initiate uh, the second program uh, with readouts of those uh, in Q3, uh, 23. So, that is a relatively short journey in, in, a, in, a biotech, uh, in a biotech company, but with a very aggressive uh, plan to generate uh, data so that we will get uh, into a situation where we will be able to continue the business development discussions uh, during that journey uh, and then uh, also uh, be able to produce uh, important readouts uh, within a, a relatively short time frame. The strategy going forward, uh, if we should sort of sum it up, uh, is, is a dual strategy uh, that uh, was alluded to uh, during the presentation. It is basically a position where we advance our existing programs in parallel with that we continue uh, the business development discussions. Uh, we believe very much in this strategy. We cannot sit on, on our hands and wait for a deal. We have some uh, very good discussions ongoing if a deal happens, it happens, but if it doesn't, then we will be in a position where we will continue to drive the project, we will continue to do what big pharma and big biotech companies are, are looking for, and therefore we are increasing the value in the program and bringing Sunact into a better position for doing an even better deal. Short summary, uh, giving a bit of background, uh, summing up the background for uh, the rights issue. We would like to continue the develop development. We really think that this compound uh, needs and deserves uh, to reach further clinical development. We would like to optimize the deal for a partnership agreement, and we would like to continue uh, develop uh, other items uh, in the in the pipeline. And then also has what has been communicated to the market that we are planning an uplist uh, mid this year to uh, Nasdaq main market. Uh, and the main reason for doing so is that uh, we would like uh, also to be exposed to uh, international investors and, and more specialized investors. So a lot of things happening uh, in 22 and in 23 uh, for Synact. So uh, please support us in uh, getting there. Thank you very much.
And thank you for the presentation. Uh, you now have the possibility to dose for 12 weeks. Uh, what benefits can this provide in terms of your uh, business development plans? Well, it fits really well in. Uh, it is one of the key questions from uh, potential takers that uh, they like the four week study. They like all the data that we have got from, from that study. But uh, on their wish list, so to speak, uh, a 12 week study uh, is exactly what, uh, what they're looking for. Uh, and of course, that's going to uh, decrease uh, their risk. Uh, it's also going to give them additional data. Uh, and therefore, we have uh, listened to that. Uh, and uh, that if, therefore, we are bringing it into basically uh, the strategy going forward. And how do you consider your patent uh, protection? Well, we, uh, we started out, uh, as you know, in, in 2012 and genera generating a, a fair bit of strong uh, patents at that point in time. Uh, but during the journey, uh, we have managed to uh, get new ideas uh, and that has had a big impact on the situation on the IP because we have been able to extend uh, the patent life. Uh, and as you know, uh, this program has to uh, go through a phase three uh, at some point in time. Uh, we are not going to, to do that. Uh, that is going to uh, be done together with a partner. But that, of course, also takes time. And therefore, it is uh, crucial for a biotech company with this sort of compounds that we can show that we have enough patent life so that uh, the project stays uh, commercial uh, viable and that we, we have been able to extend it uh, from uh, basically all up to uh, 42 uh, is, 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 a major, is a major thing in, uh, in, in the development of, of SINACT because it gives us ample time and is definitely a key driver in, uh, in business development discussions. And finally, what are your key takeaway messages to your shareholders? I think the key message is here that uh, we are driving a, a dual strategy where we are having strong focus on the business development, but at the same time, uh, we don't know how the world will develop. And therefore, it has been important for us to take in the money, ensure that we can continue to drive the company and that we can stay in focus in getting the programs optimized, thereby optimizing the value for uh, all shareholders in the company. Interesting, and thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you.